Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Front Range. My name is Johnny. I am one of our teaching pastors here. We're so glad that you're with us, especially if it is your first time here today. We hope that this place will become a home for you where you can build community, discover your purpose, and grow in your faith in Jesus. And if it is your first time today, I'd love to meet you uh, after service. I'll be hanging out in the courtyard near our blue connections tent. And if you uh, didn't get a gift on the way in, we've got this gift for every single person uh, this morning who is here for the first time. Uh, these cool new cups that we've got. They're awesome. Uh, I may have stolen one myself, uh, but they're cool. So, so come meet us out there. We'd love to just chat with you and, and get to know you a little bit if it's your first time here today. Uh, I want to let you know today ends the early bird pricing for our men's retreat. You guys have probably seen these cards on every other seat here this morning. So dudes, if you're even thinking about joining us, please, please sign up today. Get the early price. Man, we have a great time. If you've not been before, it's just, it's awesome. We're out in the mountains. Um, we're, we're doing stuff like rappelling down this rock wall. You can see in the image there. You can just take a nap if you don't want to do that. Sometimes I choose to do that instead. Uh, we got some chicken wings. We eat good. We hang out. Campfire time. It's awesome. So if you've never been before, maybe you've been in the years past, you're just like waiting to sign up. Today is the day. Take these cards home. There's QR code you can scan. There's also just a link you can type in at the bottom uh, right there and you can get the, the sign up information. Now, Today we are continuing a series called No Accidental Saints. And what we're doing with this series is we're looking at this idea of formation, specifically spiritual formation. We are all, every single one of us, all of us are being formed in some way or another. And the challenge for people who follow Jesus is to intentionally choose how we are being formed and who we are being formed into. What God wants for his people is to be formed into the image of Jesus, to look like him, to show him love and love to other people. And we're meant to be formed into that image for the sake of others, because that's how God makes an impact in our lives and in the world around us. And it's also where we as followers of Jesus find the true joy and hope and life that we're all longing for. So what we're doing with this series is we're looking at different practices, things that we can do in our lives to help open us up more to this work that God is doing in our lives and to help us be formed into the image of Jesus. And this uh, series is very practical because we're talking about practices. So I want to encourage you, uh, if you want to take a next step outside of a Sunday morning, go to our series hub on our website, frontrange.org. We make a, a web page for every one of our series where we put a bunch of resources, a reading plan, some podcasts, videos, books, things that you can check out to help you uh, take a next step in your faith. And I really want to encourage that for this series because, again, it's practical. We're talking about practices, things that you can do. So check that out. Now, let me ask you a question as we get started with our topic here today. What in your life, what do you find hard to say no to? And you don't have to answer out loud. Just think about it for a second. What can you just not say no to in your life? For me, ice cream. <laughs> I think we know this about me here. I love food, right? Ice cream is just the thing for me. It doesn't matter what time of day it is, how full I am. If my wife comes around the corner from the kitchen and is like, hey, you want a bowl of ice cream? Yes. Yes is the answer. Uh, my wife's an enabler in that way. But uh, it's just who I am. I just, I can't say no. I, I'm, I'm similar with cheeseburgers because I'm a basic red-blooded American man. I just like a quarter pounder with cheese. Lord forbid you get me at McDonald's and give me a burger and a McFlurry. I'm done. I'm done. Right? Okay? Now, think outside of food. What else can you just not say no to? Because for me, uh, if I get caught up in a good show, I can't say no to another episode. And sometimes, if I'm really into it, I'll wake up on the other side of like three or four episodes and like, oh, where'd the time go? Like, you guys know what I'm talking about, right? It's like, oh, I was in a coma or something. Like, what happened here? Now, why am I making us hungry and feel bad for ourselves? Not trying to shame anyone. Please don't feel that way. That's not what this is about. I bring up this idea of saying no because it's related to our spiritual formation and our topic for today. Our ability or inability to say no to things in our lives has a direct impact on our spirituality. Imagine that there's such a thing as a no muscle in your body, in your life. And imagine that the strength of that muscle has a direct impact a massive impact on your relationship with Jesus and the fruit that you see from your life with him. Have you, have you ever found yourself in your life 
struggling with a particular sin or habit that you know is contrary to the way of life that God has for you? Have you ever felt that struggle before? If you're alive and awake, the answer to that should be yes. I think every single one of us is like, yeah, there's, there's that thing or, the, or this or whatever. You can, you can fill in the blank there. This is the struggle of being human and following Jesus, right? This is the conflict that we feel. When we come into a relationship with God, we, uh, we come to a realization, I'm a sinner. I can't save myself. I need a savior. And thank God he sent Jesus to pay the price for our sins on the cross. And so we enter into this relationship with him. We're invited into this amazing journey. And God fills us with his spirit and he begins to work from the inside out to renew us, to make us more like him, to draw us into the life that he has for us, but there's a tension. Some things in our lives God will wipe away and, and take away, and I've seen that happen, and other things seem to be more of a struggle or a battle. I've seen in my own life and in, in friends and family members, I've seen addictions completely broken. I've seen people changed from mean and angry to loving and joyful. The power of God is real, and when we give him our lives, he does amazing things. And yet, how many of us have continued to struggle in certain areas? I know that I have. We all have our struggles, right? We could name any number of things, lust, anger, selfishness, jealousy, fill in the blank with whatever's coming to mind for you, and I'm sure someone else here can go, yeah, me too. I've been open about my struggles with anger, and that's one of the things in my life that I, I go to God sometimes, and I'm like, Lord, can you please just, can you just do something? Can I, can I just not be an angry person? Can I just not struggle with this? Can you just take this away from me? And I've, I've been working on my pride and my judgment recently because I am negative and critical by nature, and I see something wrong with a person or a situation first, second, third, fourth sometimes. And so I go to God, I'm like, I don't want to be this person anymore. I don't want to have this going on in my life. So what's up with these kinds of things? And what can we do about it? The Apostle Paul, he talked about this, this conflict that we feel is a battle between our flesh and the spirit. If you've got a Bible, open up to Galatians chapter 5. We're going to read a few verses from the Apostle Paul in here. If you don't have a Bible that you uh, can understand or read regularly, we'd love to give you one. We've got those at our Blue Connections tent out in the courtyard. We don't need your name, money, nothing like that. we just love for you to have a Bible. So grab one of those, but we'll also have the Scripture on the screen. Here's what Paul says in Galatians chapter 5. We'll start in verse 13. He says, you, my brothers and sisters, talking to followers of Jesus, you were called to be free. But do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh. Then in verse 17, he says, For the flesh desires what is contrary to the spirit, and the spirit what is contrary to the flesh. They are in conflict with each other. Paul wants us to see here that when we give our lives to Christ, when we choose to follow him, we are set free from the old way. We turn from our sins, and we are meant to live in the freedom that Christ has given to us, to not use that freedom and that forgiveness to lean into those desires that we know are contrary to what he calls us to do. And yet there is this, this conflict, this battle. If you're a follower of Jesus, you've felt this, maybe on a daily basis. It's the struggle between knowing what I should do but not actually choosing to do it. Paul talks about this in Romans chapter 7. The good news for us is that there is a spiritual practice that can help in this area of our lives. It can help open us up more to the work of God's Spirit to help us overcome this conflict and lean into the way of living that God wants for us. And the practice that I'm talking about is fasting. It's fasting. In, in biblical terms, fasting is when we go without food and we focus more on the presence of God. We, we pray, we, we read scripture, we spend time with him rather than eating. Now, fasting as a dieting tool has become uh, more popular recently. That's totally fine. I, I got nothing against that. But what I'm focused on here is uh, the, the fasting is a spiritual practice and helping us connect more with God in our lives. Fasting was extremely common 
in the ancient world, particularly for Jewish Pharisees who would fast once or twice a week. Um, All Jews were required to fast on the Day of Atonement. There were seasons of fasting for a week or more, and Jesus, famously as we know, fasted for 40 days when he went to to have uh, his battle with the enemy in the wilderness. Jesus also instructed his followers to fast. In Matthew chapter 6, Jesus makes a few statements um, giving us instructions on how to do some of these things. He says, when you give, do it in this way. When you pray, do it in this way. And when you fast is one of the statements that he makes in there. So this is something that God has given to us as an opportunity to connect with him in a deeper way, to put off our flesh and to engage the spirit in our lives. So let's talk about some of the reasons that we do that we would do this. And this, I just want to say up front, this is a very brief overview of the topic of fasting. And if you want to do a deep dive, we've got some resources on that series hub, uh, in particular a podcast that you can listen to and some other things. Uh, so I want to encourage you, if you're intrigued by this topic and you want to go deeper, the series hub uh, is where you can do a deep dive there. We're just going to hit a few uh, reasons why we fast. The first of which is that we experience freedom and power. Freedom and power. This is what Paul is talking about in Galatians 5. He's encouraging us to fight the battle and to let God help us overcome the conflict between our flesh and our spirit. And the way that we do that is by working out the no muscle in our lives that, that, that I talked about earlier. This idea of saying no to things. If we can say no to good things or even neutral things, it helps us in our ability to say no to evil and sinful things. This is something that spiritual writers and followers of Jesus have discovered for hundreds and hundreds of years, that there is this connection between being able to say no to something that's not necessarily bad and how it helps us say no to the actual bad things. Peter wrote in 1 Peter chapter 4, Since Christ suffered in his body... Arm yourselves also with the same attitude, because whoever suffers in the body is done with sin. As a result, they do not live the rest of their earthly lives for evil human desires, but rather for the will of God. That's what I want in my life. I want to live my life for his will, not my own. I want to experience the freedom and the power that he offers. But to do that, we have to embrace suffering sometimes. Jesus called his followers to deny yourself. And this is what he's talking about uh, when he says that. We intentionally choose to deny what our flesh wants in order to train ourselves to let God be our guide and to empower us to live for him. Ancient church fathers like St. Augustine wrote and taught that we should learn to check ourselves in things that are not morally wrong so that we can experience freedom from those that are. Basically, an ancient way of saying check yourself before you wreck yourself, right? <laughs> he wrote that in the first couple of centuries. That's all right. It's, it's training that no muscle, and fasting helps us learn to do this. But let me, let me be clear in something. I'm talking about all the benefits and the things uh, that fasting can do in our lives. Fasting is not a silver bullet. It's not a lever that you can pull to make God do what you want him to do. It's something that can help us get our flesh out of the way to allow God's spirit the room to work in greater ways in my heart, my mind, and my body. It draws us closer to him so that he can work in greater ways in our lives. Paul says in Romans that the same spirit that lives in you as a follower of Jesus is the spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. I believe with all of my heart, my soul, my being that there is real power available to us by the Holy Spirit, that God wants to work in our lives to help us overcome this conflict. And I want you to be encouraged as a follower of Jesus that God is at work in your life and there are things that we can do to help us in this area, to help move our flesh out of the way, to experience more of what God has for us, more of his presence and his power. So fasting can help us in this area. The next reason that we fast is that we discover deeper desires. We discover deeper desires. Have you ever... Uh, eaten so much that you feel sick and miserable afterward? I think most of us have gotten to that point. For me, basically anytime I go to a Mexican restaurant, (laughs) it's the chips and salsa. It's the chips and salsa. You know what I'm talking about. Chips and salsa is my desert island food. That's what I, I... that would be, I did, this happened to me last night at Lostos. The favor of God was upon us. There was no wait. We walked right in and sat at a table. They put the chips and salsa down, and then I went to town, 
right? And so you, you eat like, I don't know, two, three baskets of chips and salsa uh, sometimes maybe. And then they bring you your entree and you're, gonna, you're not going to not eat the entree you're about to pay for, right? And so you leave and you're just like, oh my gosh, what did I do? Why did I do it again, right? What's going on there is we are meeting this surface level, this short-term desire rather than the long-term desire. The long-term desire when you eat a meal is to be satisfied, not to be miserable. And so there's this, there's this connection there in our spiritual lives where sometimes what the world offers us will meet that surface level thing, but not the actual deeper desire that we have in our lives. We all have these deep needs that can only be met by God. Our longing for purpose and peace is so much deeper than what the world can offer us. And there is a moment for each of us in our lives where we realize that we want something more. We're not satisfied with our lives the way that they are, and we feel like something needs to change. I've been there. I've been there in my relationship with God over the last year, wondering, like, am I just going through the motions? Am I just doing what a good Christian is supposed to do? Or is there something deeper in my relationship with God that he has for me? Is there some sort of experience? Is there something that God is drawing me into? And how can I get there? So I've taken spiritual practices like fasting more seriously over the last couple of months to go, you know what, I'm not going to just go through the motions. I'm going to do what God is calling me to do to see what he has for me. But look, let me be honest, I don't like fasting, right? This is not the topic I want to talk about. I love food, if that hasn't been clear to you. I enjoy eating. So the idea of denying myself food sounds insane. But what I've discovered when taking this seriously, is that the, the desire for food, at, at a certain point, it just sort of fades into the background. And I become more hungry for God's presence, for prayer, for scripture. And maybe over time, Lord willing, hopefully, God is beginning to change some of the deeper things in my life that go untouched because of the pace that I live at, rarely slowing down or getting beneath the surface. And nothing will slow you down like going hungry for a while. Nothing will call your attention to what's going on in your life like an empty stomach. And so I've been trying to take this seriously and see, God, what do you have for me? In fasting, the goal is to get in touch with our hunger for God. Hunger is the state of wanting or needing something that you do not have. So when we fast, we awaken our body and our soul to our deep hunger for God's presence. Now, I know I started this whole thing by talking about how fasting is a way of helping us change and grow to overcome our flesh. But the, the true purpose of fasting is just like any other spiritual discipline. It's to be with God. It's in that place of being with him that we awaken more to his voice. We clear out the noise of the world in a way that allows us to hear from him and to follow him more closely. If you found yourself in a place of wanting more, of dissatisfaction, or maybe stuck in a pattern or a habit of sin, and you're like, God, is this all there is? Maybe fasting is something you ought to try. Maybe it's something to try to work into your spiritual life with him. And we're going to talk about how to do that now. And in, in order to help us do that, I want to invite up a friend of mine. He's our church planning resident. His name is Charles Getz. Let's give it up for Charles as he helps us talk about this. All right. Thank you, Johnny. How many Clark Griswold fans do we have here? All right. We got a few of them. Uh, most of us know Clark from Christmas Vacation, but did you know there were two other vacation movies before that one? Um, in vacation, Clark and his family get stranded out in the middle of the desert. So Clark heads out looking for help. He's wandering around in the excruciating desert heat without any food or water, and of course, gets lost. Before I started fasting, I just couldn't shake the visual of Clark wandering around in the desert without any food or water. I thought that's what I would be feeling like, just wandering around miserably and starving to death. So if you're sitting here thinking, Man, I've never fasted before. This sounds intimidating. I'm going to get hangry and end up doing something I regret. 
let me tell you, you're probably not alone in that. I'm confident that if we were to survey the room this morning, the vast majority of us would probably have to admit that we don't regularly fast as a spiritual discipline or have ever even done it at all. And that's okay. I think in general, fasting is a forgotten spiritual discipline in the American church. For me, uh, fasting hasn't been a major part of my walk with the Lord uh, until recently. But through fasting, God has done some amazing work on my heart. I'll share an example later, but he's revealed blind spots in my life and brought me into a deeper relationship with him. And I'm confident he will do awesome things in and through you guys as well as you partake in fasting. So how do we do it? The best way is to start out small. Pick one meal once a week. If you're like me, you probably have a bunch of excuses of why not to fast, like, I can't do it because I'm not going to be able to, to perform well at work. I realized I had to stop thinking about all the reasons not to do it and start thinking about all the reasons to do it. Through fasting, God is giving us this amazing oppor opportunity to deepen our intimacy with him. It's also giving us a chance to deny ourselves, as Jesus called us to, and trust that God is going to take care of us. In John 6, 35, Jesus says, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never grow hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. When we choose to abstain from eating food, we can instead be filled up by the only thing that can truly satisfy us, God himself. And that leads us to the next piece to fasting. When you fast, spend the time that you would have spent eating and instead, spend that time in prayer and reading God's Word. Uh, if your meal times are a little bit hectic, I'm thinking of my wife here who's surrounded by three little kids at breakfast, lunch, and dinner, or maybe you just have a job that doesn't allow you to get away, then make sure you center your thoughts on God by praying and turning to Scripture continuously throughout the day. I really want us to, to encourage us uh, to be intentional about this and has a, have a plan before we begin fasting. Try picking a verse or two you want to meditate on um, and write down people or things you want to pray about. If we decide to not eat and we don't center on God, then we're just going to be torturing ourselves, and that is far from the point of this, so like, let's not do that, right? Trust me, your body is going to be constantly reminding you that you need food. When that happens, turn to God in prayer and meditate on His Word. There are tons of powerful and awesome Bible verses and passages um, that you can meditate on as you fast. We put a list of those together and added them to the series hub if you're looking for any suggestions. Do what works for you, but make sure to have a plan to fill up your soul with God. When you do, the Holy Spirit is going to come in and he's going to give you the strength you need and he's going to slowly be shaping you into the image of Christ. As 2 Corinthians 3.18 says, And we all who with unveiled faces contemplate the Lord's glory are being transformed into his image with ever-increasing glory, which comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. Our God is so, so good. He doesn't just leave us the way we are. When we open ourselves up to his transforming power, he steps in and makes us more and more like Christ himself. The final step is to be sensitive to what's going on internally as we fast. When the flesh is starved of what it craves, Emotions and thoughts can come up out of nowhere. And these are great moments where God can speak and move in our lives. So let's be aware of this. Ask God to show you what he has for you and pray for a willingness to follow where the Holy Spirit leads. A helpful practice for this is to journal the thoughts that come up as you fast, review those thoughts and put them up against scripture, and then go over them with a Christian friend. One thing God has brought to light to me through fasting is that I have neglected the poor. It was maybe my second time fasting, and by the time 2 p.m. rolled around, I was feeling pretty weak and hungry. And that's when it hit me. I had only fasted through two meals, and there are people who live in a perpetual state of hunger because they are unable to get the food they need right here in our community. And that hurt my heart because I realized I have turned a blind eye to them. Has God ever hit you with something like that? God also reminded me of how incredibly blessed I am to never have to worry about having enough food for myself 
or my family because so, so many people around the world don't have that luxury. Now I'm praying for the poor regularly and my family and I are finding ways to share God's love with them. I'm confident none of this would have happened if I hadn't have been fasting. And I don't say this to say, hey, look at me, look what I'm doing. I share this because this is what happens when we open ourselves up to God. He reminds us of reasons to be grateful, he reveals our shortcomings, and he provides us of ways to be more like him and to become into a deeper relationship with him. And remember, that's the entire reason why we fast. That's the entire reason why we practice any spiritual discipline. They are all a means to an end. And the end goal for us as followers of King Jesus is to be in union with Christ and to become more like him, to grow in holiness, to grow in our ability to fulfill our God-given calling and purpose of loving God and loving others. So, as a church, we're going to do a six-week fasting challenge. We want to invite you guys to join us in that um, and to sign up. Just text the word FAST to the number on the screen, and then we're going to send you uh, Bible verses and other resources to help while you fast. Uh, we're going to pick one meal uh, every Thursday. Uh, ideally, choose lunch. If you already skip breakfast, don't choose that and tell yourself you're, ch- uh, you're fasting. That, that would be cheating. Um, yeah, so choose to fast a meal um, that you normally eat, and then let's commit to it and get it on the calendars. And remember to focus on the things we discussed during this message. One super important item to note um, is if if you have a medical diagnosis that makes fasting from food unhealthy for you, or if you've uh, dealt with an eating disorder or body image issue, then please know fasting from food might not be a wise choice for you. And a quick sidebar here, if you are dealing with an eating disorder or body image issue, I realize this is a hard topic. I want you to know that God sees you, and he loves you, and he wants you to get help. So please, uh, don't try to fight this alone. Bring God and other people into your situation. We have uh, an awesome ministry here at Front Range called Celebrate Recovery, and we would absolutely love to have you join us for that. So please, please come. come, uh, We meet on Monday nights. Um, There are people in my life that are close to me that have dealt with eating disorders and body image issues, and for them, fasting from food just isn't a wise choice because it opens the door to... Uh, temptation, and other unhealthy thoughts. So if that's you, please don't fast from food. Um, Another great option is to abstain from something like TV, your phone, exercise. Pick something that will be a significant challenge to give up. Lastly, as you fast or abstain, make sure to share your experience with your community. Share what God is teaching you and ask uh, your friends and family what God is teaching them. God relentlessly loves each and every one of us more than we can comprehend. And through fasting, he's giving us this amazing opportunity to experience a greater freedom that only he can provide. And he's offering us a way to know him more intimately and worship him at a deeper level. So let's offer ourselves to God through fasting as a church. I know when we do, he's going to step in and move in and through us in beautiful, beautiful ways because he's awesome. And that's what God does. Let's pray. Oh, dear Lord, I thank you for your church. I thank you for this church, Lord. I thank you that we all get to be witness to you moving here, Lord. We thank you for your love, your mercy, and your grace, Lord, that you just pour over us again and again and again, Lord. We thank you for loving us first and always, Lord. I thank you uh, for providing us with ways to become closer to you, Lord to become more like you, to worship you deeper, to experience greater freedom in you, Lord. Um, I thank you for fasting. I thank you for giving us this opportunity as a church to join in this challenge, Lord. Um, And I pray that you would pull all of us into this and that we would come into it with open hearts, Lord, and that we would be open to whatever you have, Holy Spirit. I pray that you would come in and move in great, big, powerful ways um, in us and through us, Lord. Uh, And I thank you that we can do that. I thank you that we can draw near to you. If you're here today and you don't feel near to the Lord, I want to remind you that you can recommit or commit your life to Jesus right here, right now, today. Jesus died on the cross for our sins and he rose again three days later so that we may be forgiven and have freedom and eternal life with him. 
And if you want to uh, commit your life to Jesus now, I want you to just raise your hand so I know how to pray for you. I'm not going to ask you to do anything. Just raise your hand and I will be able to pray. Amen. Jesus, we thank you. We thank you for paying that price. We thank you for making the way for us to have an intimate relationship with you, Lord. We thank you that you are alive and you are a king. I pray that you would come move in us and through us in this fasting challenge, Lord. We love you. We praise you. In Jesus' name, amen.